Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. So I surf and reverb, as I always do every single day of my life, and I ran across the strangest Les Paul listing I've ever seen. Gibson Les Paul Single Coil DG20. Dave Grohl 20? When did he get a signature guitar? Oh, wait. <laughs> it's a Stratopaul. Let's take a look at this thing. Listed by Nick's Gear Emporium in Surrey, United Kingdom. We've got an all blacked out Paul right next to a really cool purple chair. But things only get crazier from here. So the first big sore thumb in the room, one, two, three single coils in a Stratocaster layout. If that doesn't enrage Les Paul lovers enough, they're active EMG single coils. <laughs> Nothing kills the secondhand market value than putting EMGs in a guitar, let alone putting single coils in a Les Paul. It, it's just so hilarious to me. I kinda like it though. But you've got the regular Nashville style bridge, a regular tailpiece, but whoa, 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 whoa. We've got a five-way toggle switch in here, which you would kind of need. It's the blade style that you would find on a Stratocaster. But then what looks like maybe a master volume and two tones, or maybe two volumes and a tone down here. I'm not sure. But you're going to notice. There's no pickguard hole. I don't see any humbucker routes on this thing. Is the DG20 actually a very obscure model from 2005? Because what's going on with our headstock here? Binding? Says Les Paul on the truss rod cover. It has the crown inlay like an early 1968 Les Paul. Check this video out for more information on that. Looks like we have like PRS style locking tuners that do it from the front. Tiny little buttons there. An ebony fretboard with no fret nibs? Like are we even sure this is a real Gibson at all? Heck, they actually are PRS tuners. But you can see that at one point in time, it looks like it had at least a Klusen style on here because that is the outline that you're seeing there and the extra screw holes on top. But then the back of the neck has a stinger, whereas the rest of it is finish less or just a very thin satin finish. I mean, it looks like we have a made in USA stamp. It's too hard to see our serial number right here, but it might be there. I mean, everything looks okay right here, right? I mean, it's kind of interesting that we still have the black on the back of the heel cap right there. Probably just too hard for somebody to sand it off. Or they might be paying homage to like some guitars that get heel caps. But look at this. I never caught that until like looking at this photo six or seven different times. Normally, these are small circle plates like you see over here. But this one's very oblong. <laughs> So the answer to this is no, this is not an authentic Gibson Les Paul in the sense that it left the factory this way. But is it an authentic Les Paul that has been modified? As it's got some pretty bizarre specs, right? Between the less than standard headstock style and pickup layout configuration. Let's dig a little bit further. So in these photos, you might just look at them and go, okay, what is he trying to show us that there's like dust on the guitar? Or it looks like there might be some steel wool attracted to these pickups when they were cleaned in the fretboard. But what I think he's trying to show you in this photo, which isn't necessarily clear, is the outline right here. This is a witness line, as they call them in the industry. It bears witness to what used to be here. So this started life as a two humbucker Les Paul, and it's been modified for this. You can see another witness line right here where the other humbucker route used to be. So that means at some point in time, those routes were filled in, and then the entire top was refinished black, and then they routed it out for the EMG single coils. Now, a friend of the seller of this actually sent me some additional photos of this guitar next to some of his. He always just thought this guitar was crazy and it gives them a chuckle. But here's what lies underneath that oblong backplate. That is the batteries. And count it, not one, but two 9 volts to power these EMG pickups. But as far as modifications go, that is really clean looking. Somebody actually had to have had a professional router. And the fact that this appears to be all finished over makes me think, huh, did they refinish the whole back of the instrument as well? I think it's kind of cool how you can see the three screw holes that they're using now versus the three that they were using on the original toggle plate. The missing one would be like right here. So they've just enlarged that and it looks, you know, pretty well done. So I think the big question now is what model did this start life as? Bound headstock with the weird stuff up here? Ebony fretboard? With no fret nibs, that means it had to have been refretted at one point in time. So I started to dig through my memory, and the first thing I thought of was, oh, one of those robot studios. They looked like this. 
They had a headstock that was bound. They had the crown. Theirs did not say Les Paul on the truss rod cover, though. But they did have the bound ebony fretboard. But their body did not have binding. And if we go to this guy's listing, he's saying it started life as a 2005 standard. So, is he lying to us? Is this actually a Les Paul studio that's been souped up and now he's asking $4,000 for it? Don't get your pitchforks yet. Let's continue on our investigation. Because you have to remember, this is 2005. These studios did not quite exist yet. Because Robot Guitars came out in 2007. And the first run looked like this. Hey, doesn't that headstock look familiar? But this one says Robot Guitar Limited Edition. Was it one of these that somebody had modified and just put a different truss rod cover on it? And added body binding? I suppose it is possible. I mean, they refinished the entire body of it. Adding binding during that process would not be that difficult. But again, this is 2007, post-dating when this guitar was created. That is, if we can believe the seller that the serial number dates this one to 2005. And I know I've seen this Les Paul truss rod cover on something with this headstock before. So the next one I went to was the Classic Antique series. There were many different Classic Antiques. One of my favorite ones is this one. It was part of the Guitar of the Week series. But this one was also from 2007, and it said Classic on the truss rod cover, but had other familiar elements. So if it's not one of those robot studios and it's not a Classic Antique, what is this thing? And then it hit me. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar Center, limited edition, exclusive, Manhattan Midnight Finish. Somebody ruined one of these. That's such a cool color for a guitar. It has the ebony fretboards, the really cool special inlays. It's a blue color, even though it looks kind of purple in this photo. It originally would have had Klusen styles that had these strange buttons on them for some reason, but it has the headstock we're looking for. It has the truss rod cover that we're looking for. This was a Guitar Center exclusive guitar. Now, to be fair, it looks like there was also other colors out there. Like here's one that was called Black Cherry, and it had the exact same headstock and cover and all that, except for the tuners were a bit different. So I guess we can't beat somebody up for refinishing a beautiful guitar, but the odds are, if you were to strip this black paint off, you would find a beautiful flame maple top underneath there. So somebody just went completely crazy on a limited edition guitar and turned it into what they wanted it to be at the time. So, okay, that definitely means the finish on the neck was shaven down. They modified it extensively in the control cavity, but all things considered, the wiring doesn't look too bad. Sure, it would have been nice if the witness lines wouldn't have shown up quite so fast. I think if I were to do that, I would actually put a very thin wooden veneer over top of it all. That way, that would never show up. It would be a little bit more work, but I think it would be worth it in the long run. As long as it's super paper thin. So now we get to talk about price. 4,000 bucks. Even his buddy thought he was crazily priced, but maybe he doesn't actually want to sell it. How do you price a guitar so unique? Well, here's what I would do. I would look at what one of these things would normally sell for. We're looking at about, what, 2,000 to 3,000 bucks. Let's give it a conservative, like, 25. I would maybe put a 30 to 40% devaluation on it because... You don't know what else has been hiding on this. Thankfully, it's got the stinger, so we're not suspicious of like a headstock repair or anything. But that doesn't mean nothing has happened underneath here. Especially if the whole body has been refinished. There could be like a heel crack being hidden. That's why refinished guitars sell for less. Not necessarily just because of the refinish work, it's the unknowns behind it. But the refinished work does devalue a guitar too. So in my opinion, I think realistically, probably 16 to 2000 is what I would guess this could still sell for. Some guys might even say that's still a little bit too high, but I think that's pretty realistic. But you also have to remember, they're in the UK, so somebody might pay a small premium over that. I don't see 4000 but maybe to the very, very, very right guy, 25 if he has to have this unique setup. So Nick, yes, you do have quite the cool, obscure guitar. But now you might be thinking, I really want a Les Paul with three single coils. Well, my friends, Epiphone has you hooked up. Because at one point in time, yes, Epiphone did make this exact guitar. <laughs> three single coils. You could modify it if you wanted to. You can see that their uh, toggle switch location was lower instead of higher. But pretty much the exact same thing. I would love to see a custom shop Gibson version of this just because, you know, it's so wrong. 
but so right, right? <laughs> I tried to get Gibson to make me a, a Les Paul Custom with Jazzmaster pickups in it, but they told me no. <laughs> it would be fun, though, because I love Jazzmaster pickups, the Pure Vintage 65s. And if you want other three single coil Gibson goodness, check out some other Guitar of the Week models. I reviewed this guitar right here. It's an SG with rail style pickups. You can find them in ash bodies and mahogany bodies, depending on which run you get. I personally think the ash bodies are cooler, but they're just, you know, an interesting guitar. But that's enough with our single coil goodness today. Let's, let, let's calm things down here with just some absolutely gorgeous Les Pauls. Take a look at this thing. 1959 reissue from 2005, a fantastic era of Gibson, at least for the USA standards, but custom shop this thing. That's a very nice quilt top. Now the only downside to beautiful, heavily quilted tops like this is they generally don't move too much. So if you like wood figuring that moves a lot, quilt tops generally aren't for you. But sometimes, sometimes they have great movement. You just really gotta judge each example in person, but that's like a, a faded out lemon burst almost. And a top like that, you don't see that too often in the custom shop. But then when you swap over to the back, it's just your standard red color. Doesn't look that much different from the USA standards of the era, to be honest. Until you get to the headstock anyways. That's when you can tell it's a historic style, and of course, by the serial number. Oh, and by the COA if that wasn't enough for ya. Alright, Chocolateites, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.